Here to analyze the 2014 legislative session, we have Senate Minority Leader David Hand. Thanks for joining us, Senator. Sure, glad to be here. Always great to have you. Let's talk first about your, just encapsulate if you could, what you thought of this session, the timeline, the work that needed to get done, and, and how it all ended. Well, I think it's hard to isolate the work that we did this year without taking it into the context of what we did last year. This is a biennial session. They both go together. Uh, and I think really the story of the session is we passed uh, taxes at a rate that uh, is really unheard of in the state of Minnesota. We raised spending a lot, uh, over 11 percent. And uh, we didn't accomplish, I think, the things that uh, most people expected. We, we did not do the things that are going to help the economy recover. Uh, we have not uh, uh, looked at the problems in our health care system, the miniature system that needs to be, uh, there, there needs to be some correction brought there. We completely ignored that issue. And I think there were some things that were done that really reflect uh, poor choices or uh, lack of uh, decision making on priorities, such as a new Senate office building. So there was a lot of activity. Uh, but at the end of the day, we had a lot of taxes raised and a lot of spending done. And I think in the long term, that's going to be a difficult thing for the people of Minnesota to deal with. Well, let's pick apart some of that spending and historic investment in education. Does your, I mean, nobody's against education. Did you think it was too much money? Well, actually, I don't know if it was historic. I think the budget that uh, the Republicans had when we were in the majority actually put more money into education than this budget, so I don't know if it was historic in that sense. But spending more money doesn't necessarily improve education, and this has been something that we've been critical of Democrats for years, is that they, they, they say if we spend a lot of money, that is proof that we've made education better. But if you look at the statistics, you look at the results, the achievement gap hasn't moved, uh, test scores have remained stagnant, uh, there still is a high percentage of kids, especially lower income and minority kids who are not even graduating from high school. Those problems persist. They've been around for a long time, decades, and spending more money hasn't moved the needle. I think we really need to look at things like uh, trying to improve the system, the structure. Part of the things that were done this year we don't think helped in that score. We've reduced the standards on teaching. We've lowered the standards on what it takes to graduate. Uh, those accountability measures, uh, we need to have them. Throwing them out the window doesn't help improve the education system. Was there anything that you thought was a success? Well, uh, I think uh, there's always things that you can look at and you can say, yes, there were good things done. There's always good things done in a legislative session. I think early on, one of the first things we did in a very bi bipartisan way was make sure that we had addressed a propane issue that uh, was, uh, we were going through a very, very cold winter and everybody agreed that there were things we could do and we acted very quickly and I think that was a good thing. Uh, but I think uh, on balance, uh, certainly it was a good thing that we repealed some of the taxes that were enacted by the Democrats last session. Uh, that was a good thing. We objected to them in the first place. A lot of business uh, people came alongside us. We talked about it for a year, finally got those things repealed. That certainly was a good thing. It was a bad thing they got enacted in the first place, but it was a good thing to repeal them. So there's always good things. Mr. Leader, I'd like to move away from some of these issues for just a moment and talk a little bit about medical marijuana and not the issue itself. Senator Bach brought up something that had been surfacing earlier as well, that this truly seemed to be a grassroots effort that raised this issue from being kind of dead in the water to actual passage of a law. What did you think of seeing people and patients? And, and do you think that this is government doing the people's work or, or not? Well, I think that this issue has been around for several years, and uh, I, I don't know that the bill that we just passed uh, is really the answer to what uh, what we need to do. Uh, I, I think uh, anytime you're dealing with medications, I think there are issues that you want to do and make sure that the public is safe and that the uh, treatments are successful and that they're being provided in a way that uh, is going to be helpful to people and not necessarily harmful to them. Uh, with, with marijuana, we've chosen to go uh, along a path that is, is completely separate from every other thing, every other way that we deal with medications. I'm not sure that that, in the long run, it makes the most sense, but it may be helpful to uh, push the federal government, for example, into a, a mode of looking at this in a more serious way. So I think medical marijuana is, is, a, is a treatment that I, I have no objection to. I'm not a doctor. I think it's probably a helpful thing. I'm not sure that the, that the steps that we took to put it in place are really the best interest of the people in the long term, but we'll see how this turns out. Finally, two, not finally, I have one more after this, but two tax bills and the bonding bill. Was your caucus content with what was passed? 
Well, the bonding bill, uh, we had asked early on that we keep within the limits of what we'd agreed to last year, which we did. Uh, we also asked for a few things that we thought should be included in that bonding bill. Uh, those things were largely agreed to by uh, the Democrat majorities. Uh, so I think, there, in our view, there's always a few clinkers in any budget bill, I, I mean bonding bill, I think there are a few in this one as well. But I think on balance, it was probably a, a pretty fair bill for both sides and for the people of the state of Minnesota. There were some good things that were done, things for the state, uh, for the University of Minnesota, for the Minsku, certainly the work on the restoration of the state capital can continue. So there were a lot of good things, some transportation projects. But, so I think it was a fairly uh, balanced bill, and I thought on the, on the whole a good one. On the last day of session, there were last few days actually, as you listen to people talk, you know, present their bills or present their conference committee reports, there was a lot of thanking of members of each party. Sure. Did you find that there was a considerable amount of bipartisan work on a lot of the legislation this year? Obviously, the bigger issues where the media focuses on. There te that tends to be where the, the differences surface. But what do you think of all these other bills? Well, I, I think there was, but I don't think that's unusual. I think that most of the things that we work on here uh, tend to have a lot of bipartisanship attached to them. Uh, and the differences that, that occur uh, oftentimes are not based on party lines, but there are other issues that may be philosophical or they may be geographical, rural versus uh, more urban areas. But there is always a very high degree of bipartisan work done on most legislation. And I do think that, especially in the Senate, that we have uh, as a group of people, 67 people from across the state, all walks of life, uh, it, we have a pretty good relationship, I think, and, and a high degree of respect for each other, no matter what party we belong to. So it, it was, uh, frankly, a good thing to see, uh, but not highly unusual. And we certainly hope that we can continue in that spirit going forward with uh, Republican majorities in the Senate. Finally, the Senate is not up for re-election. The House is. What do you think the message of the GOP will be? Well, I think the message really has to be, again, let's look at the context of what happened in the last two years with uh, one party rule, Democrat rule, in the, uh, both houses of the legislature and the governor. And what we believe is that we can show that there's been an excessive amount of spending without a lot of result. Uh, there's been a tendency to be, we think, disrespectful of the ability for people to govern themselves, make decisions that are important to them. And we think there's been uh, a misplaced priorities on, on what Democrats chose to do. Uh, so we think as Republicans going forward and, and trying to restore, we think, some balance to government, a Republican majority in the House, we can do better at restraining the spending growth. We can do better at uh, restoring some of the trust that we think uh, uh, the people should have in, the, in their government, and uh, we can do better at setting priorities and really getting about accomplishing things rather than just saying we spent money. Senator David Han, enjoy the interim. We appreciate your time. Thank you.